Hello and welcome to the Healing Stream Reflection. The title of today's post is The Many Ways a Father Will Love His Family. There are many ways, but I want us to look at maybe five or more ways. It is clear from Scripture that a father or a daddy is given the responsibility by God as early as the Garden of Eden to be a provider when God instructed Adam to tend and keep the garden in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. That is why Paul warns Timothy that he should be very mindful by advising fathers to devote themselves to their faith else they have denied the faith and they are worse than an unbeliever as first timothy 5 8 tells us In a sense, a father providing for the family is very, very important. It's no accident that the Bible refers to God as our father. And even describing God's true character and nature, pointing to him as the perfect example for us to follow. And it is amazing how many times in the New Testament the fatherhood of God is placed alongside human fatherhood to illustrate how we as human fathers can love our children. And one of the ways we do that according to the book of Timothy is by providing for our families knowing that with each child that enters the family, it's a reminder that God has given that this wonderful privilege, an opportunity to provide for their families. Beloved, It's very, very important for you and I to understand that just as God wants to provide for us, that should convince us that as a willing father, he's also eager to answer human fathers here on planet F so that they'll be able to provide for their kids. Remember in Matthew chapter 7, 9 to 11 when Jesus said that oh, what man is there among you who if his son asks for bread will give him a stone or if he asks for a fish will give him a serpent. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father who is in heaven go give good gifts or good things to those who ask him? And so, beloved, it is clear that while it is true that God 
is our provider. So also, God is saying that if fathers, human fathers on earth ask him, he'll provide for them so that they in turn will provide for their children. Then the second aspect has to do with the fact that dads or fathers need to teach their children to be godly. It's very, very important. And teaching the kids to be godly, God, where places responsibility, is query on the parents. Especially in terms of the fact that we all know that the Lord disciplines those he loves. Sometimes love becomes a discipline. And we know God does it to us or as his children. Helping our children make the right decision is an expression of our love. And so here, Father's goal in administering discipline is to encourage godliness in their kids. And I bring that will bring the fruit of righteousness to help the kids to do one thing. So our goal in administering discipline is to encourage godliness. It's not an opportunity to vent our anger. It's not because these kids are driving me crazy. No. It's because we love our children too much to allow them to develop sinful habits that will lead them away from God's will and the promise of His blessing. Um, the third aspect is that it's very, very important also for fathers to respond with compassion. For instance, as we all know, fathers express love to their children by providing for them and disciplining them. But we also have responsibility to respond with compassion. You see, the goal of our discipline is to help them to be personal best, not perfect. Psalm 103, 13 to 14 states, The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. And the Apostle Paul adds, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord Ephesians 6 form. So, our correction should be constructive, not destructive. You see, the goal of a godly discipline is to cultivate good attitudes in our children and to encourage them. When we are raising our kids, there is a fine line between maintaining the standard of what is right and understanding that they are growing, that they are kids, and that they need grace. We don't always do that well. That wasn't the way many of us were brought up. You know, you know, along with all the rules and standards, it's important to find a balance and to have fun too. Then the fourth aspect is that fathers must recognize their individuality. It's very, very important. Now, one habit of great parents is that they study their children. Genesis 49 records the blessing that Jacob issued to each of his 12 sons. He didn't give a blanket statement. He provided something special for every single person in his family. Occasionally, a parent would blunt out, why can't you be like your brother? Or why can't you be like your sister. You see, the obvious answer is that each child is a different person. God can create, our God has created, let me put it that way, each one of our children unique. And some of them are athletes, and um, some of them are musicians, and some of them um, 
um, into all kinds of different hobbies. And the greatest thing we can do is to love them, nurture them, shape them, know them, and prepare them to step out into this wide world as unique individual, blessed of God. And so as parents, our job is to learn about our children. Because each of them has their own personality and abilities. Because each of them is unique. It can set our children free, you know, uh, to be people. God created them to be. If we will help them find their strengths, their gifts, and their talents, and then celebrate them for who they are, and help them become everything God wants them to be. Then finally, we have to, in a wisdom way, in a lovely manner, reinforce the identity. You see, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible says, a voice from heaven proclaimed, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Mighty Trace. What a great statement that is. I don't think there is anything that we can do for our kids, especially in this generation. That's more important than being your cheerleaders. You know, I've watched some of the kids when they were growing up. I decided that when I made a commitment to support them and encourage them by being physically present at the activities. You see, and I, at times you can see some unique gifts in them. And at times it's good to support them go over to the places that they find themselves, performing those unique gifts within them, and then be there for them. It's very, very important for you and I to understand that we have to give them the needed help. And those help are very important to their day-to-day -day lives. But periodically, our priorities come in conflict with each other, especially these kids. And sometimes, um, the kids need to take priority of everybody else and everyone else. That's how we pass our values onto our kids. And we don't do it right all the time. But when we see those values being passed on to the next generation, it is a wonderful thing. You know, fatherhood is more caught than it is taught. And our kids catch it when they see it happen. Let's do everything we can to cheer them on to greatness. Beloved Daddy, beloved Father, it is my prayer that the Lord God will help you with these nuggets of counseling points or power points to implement it in your home. And by God's grace, I know it will bring a difference. May God richly bless you. And bye for now.